station. This is Melanie Cowan at STEC. How do you hear me? And Melanie and STEC, great to hear you. I have you loud and clear. Welcome aboard. Well, thank you for having us, Samantha. I join you together with Madrid, Trento, and Vienna. We have many students that are anxious to hear about Mission X and ask you some questions. So please open the event. It's, it's wonderful to have you all, uh, all there in those different locations. And uh, Paxi says hello too, by the way. And uh, before we start, I uh, heard that something wonderful happened today, that Astro Charlie made it to the moon thanks to all the points that you uh, gathered. So congratulations. And if you're ready for some questions, Samantha, I would like to go to Madrid. Madrid, your first question, please. Hi. Paula, I'm a 11 years old, and here is my question. Where do you eat if I'm 20 Hello, Paula. Um, you know, it's a way of uh, saving weight and mass when we launch food. Uh, by dehydrating it, we can save launching up the water. And uh, we have plenty of water on board. We actually continuously recycle it. Um, so we don't have to bring up uh, extra water from Earth, and so that way we save. Plus, it's a way for the food to, um, to be eatable for a longer time. It's a way to conserve food for a longer time. Thank you, Samantha. Madrid, your next question. Hello, my name is Judith. I'm 10 years old, and here is my question. Well, um, we don't have a doctor on board right now, although sometimes we do because some astronauts are doctor our doctors. Um, however, none of us is a doctor right now. Uh, but uh, most of us have a training to be crew medical officers, uh, which doesn't mean that we're doctors, but it means that we are trained to perform some simple medical procedures. Um, and then we are all, of course, trained to react in case of a, you know, a serious emergency, like somebody's heart stops. Uh, we can all administer resuscitation, CPR. Um, and then on console on the ground in the um, control Control centers, we have uh, doctors who are either on consoles or on call, and we can always get a hold of them in case we need so that they can advise on a treatment. Thank you. We're now going to Trento for their first question. Hi, Samantha. I'm Elle. I'm 12 years old, and this is my question. Well, first of all, hello to a special hello to Trent, um, because it, it's a city I know very well. I've lived in Trent for a year when I went to school, and I grew up in the region, so a special hello. Um, so the menu of our mission, the, the main part of our menu, is uh, produced, selected and produced at the NASA uh, Food Lab in Houston. Uh, however, we also get to bring up a little bit of special food. We call it bonus food. And that is um, selected by us, by the astronauts, and prepared to our taste. And so the, the bonus food that I uh, selected was uh, produced in, uh, in Italy. Um, and I put together the menus together with a um, nutritionist and a, um, a cook with whom we, sh we share a, 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 you know, the vision that food is really, really important to make us stay healthy and feel well, especially you know, in a stressful environment like the space station. So we have put together really, really healthy ingredients, but all those dishes are also delicious and a pleasure to eat. Thank you. And Trento, your second question, please. Hi, my name is Thank you. 
throughout the mission, we have uh, a, a, some psychological assistant, a, assistance. Every two weeks, we have a short conference, 15 minutes, with a psychologist with whom we can talk and they ask questions and they make sure that we, you know, we um, as, as you know, individuals and also as a crew are, are functioning well from a psychological point of view. And then if we had the need, of course, we could talk to them more often. Um, before the flight, uh, we don't really um, work or talk to psychologists that much, um, but we, we, we do a, you know, training that helps us in, in terms of team building and learning to work with each other, learning to know and appreciate each other before we come up to space and, and, and work for a long time in, in this confined environment together. Well, thank you, Samantha. We're now going to our friends in Vienna. Vienna, please ask your question. Hello, my name is Gwendolyn. I'm eight years old and I come from Vienna. We all need oxygen in order to breathe and Do you bring the oxygen up from Can you produce the oxygen? We do a little bit of both. Uh, sometimes uh, cargo ships resupply oxygen. They bring us some more. Ox they bring us some more oxygen. Uh, however, we also have uh, equipment. The, the Russian segment has one, and we have one here on the uh, non-Russian part of the space station that can actually produce oxygen by electrolysis of water. They split the water, and they, you know, those uh, pieces of equipment, they can split the water and and separate the hydrogen from the oxygen, and that. It's how we can make oxygen here on the space station. Thank you. Vienna, your next question, please. Hello, my name is Sophie, and I come from... I am Mike, and I come from Stad. Is there a risk of flying? There is always a chance that we can collide with uh, with another object uh, on our flight path, um, but uh, there's a lot of care taken to make sure that that does not happen. All of big objects that are in in orbit, um, you know, near our orbit, are tracked. We we know where they are. There are radars on the ground that look at them and track them all the time. And if there is a risk of collision, if it looks that they will come anywhere close to the space station, we can do what we call a debris avoidance maneuver, which really means that we turn on our engines here on the space station to change our orbit a little bit so we will get out of the way. And we have to do that because, you know, we, the space station, can move out of the way, but those objects are usually dead objects. They cannot maneuver, so they will not get out of the way, so we have to move. Well, thank you, Samantha. We're now going back to Madrid. Madrid, your next question. Hi, my name is Carolina. I'm 11 years old. This is my question. Are there any children or lovers in the state or air? Well, here's the thing. On, uh, in terms of work on the, you know, work and life on the space station, we work on a 24-hour clock, just like we do on Earth. Um, however, it's artificial. We don't really have, you know, a day and night cycle of 24 hours like we do on Earth. In fact, we circle the Earth because we go so fast. We circle the Earth once every 90 minutes. So, in a way, every Earth day is 15 to 16 days here on ISS. We get 15 to 16 times per day a sunrise and the sunset. But of course we don't wake up and go to sleep 16 times a day. We work on an artificial regular 24-hour clock. Thank you. And Madrid, your next question, please. Hi, I'm Madrid. I'm a And, um, this is my question. How 
So here on the space station, exercise is extremely important, just as it is for, for anybody on Earth. But for us, it's, it's so critical that we never skip a day. Uh, we work out for a couple of hours every single day. And the reason is that we are in, a, we are in weightlessness. So our muscles and our bones, as you, I'm sure you've learned during your Mission X uh, uh, program, uh, would debilitate, we would lose muscle mass and bone mass if we didn't exercise a lot. So we have different types of exercise. For cardiovascular, we have a bike, which is kind of a cool bike, it does not have a seat. Uh, and a treadmill, which is also pretty cool, it's on the wall, so we run on the wall. And uh, those are really important for your heart and resistance, but for example, the impact of your feet on the treadmill are also important to stimulate your bones so that you do not lose a lot of bone. And then we do resistive exercise, which is kind of like weightlifting, except that of course weight is meaningless in space. So we have a special machine that has vacuum cylinders and we can work out on it just like we would with weights on Earth. Thank you. We're now going back to Trinto. Trinto, your next question. Okay, I think you have asked me, and it's not about, I'm sure you, you have asked it in, in a great way, the audio quality is not always great today. So I think you have asked me if the um, food tastes different. Um, I have heard very often from astronauts who said that, that their f taste have changed a lot in space. Personally, you know, we're all different, and, and that's a wonderful thing. Uh, personally, I have not noticed that. I tend to like the same things that I liked on Earth. I tend to like them here on orbit. Um, so I guess in, in, my, in my case, the, question, the answer is no. It, it did not change much. Thank you, Samantha. And indeed, Trento's audio is struggling today. But did you go back to Trento? And the question was, Samantha, in what way your physical processes change? Okay, yes, that's a, that's a very interesting question. Um, in terms, you know, of uh, sleeping and uh, eating, uh, in, in many ways it's surprisingly the same. Um, I find myself, uh, um, you know, digesting very well up here, sleeping very well. Of course, it's a little bit different in, in the mechanics of it. Of course, you know, when you sleep, you do not sleep in a bed. We sleep in a sleeping bag and we kind of like float or some of us like to tie themselves down. I like to just float in, in my little cabin, which is my place to sleep. Um, and, it, and I kind of like it, not, not having pressure on my, on my body and just float. Um, Eating, again, in terms of swallowing and digestion, it works just the same. But of course, as we mentioned before, uh, food is different. You know, we have to rehydrate it. It comes out of pouches. Um, you know, we have to take care that it doesn't, you know, float around or we don't, uh, we have a lot of, um, you know, food um, uh, getting out of control. Um, and then in terms of working, you have to learn, you know, to, to set up your workspace, to make sure that you um, take care not to lose things, everything you have to velcro somewhere or use a bungee to restrain it and at the beginning it's a little bit difficult because we're not used to it and so at the beginning you lose things um, and uh, you know it's hard to take to, to keep everything under control but then uh, with practice like everything you learn thank you very much we're now going back to Vienna Vienna your next question hello I'm 
sorry, Vienna, but your audio has broken up. The question is from Michelle, who's eight years old. Did you bring up some music with you to the space station? In your opinion, what music fits best for listening in space? Oh, I brought up a lot of uh, music um, and I brought up all kinds of music because I wanted to be ready for any mood and, and any situation. And uh, I don't know about you, but with, you know, for me with music, it, it's kind of like that. I mean, I, uh, you know, from, you know, on a day I will feel like listening to one type of music on another day to another type of music. You know, we are up here for six months. It's a long time. Um, and, and, and every day is a little bit different. Your mood changes, what you do changes. This is really our, our home. So you imagine yourself for six months, you probably are going to listen to different types of music. Um, and so it's the same here. Sometimes you want like a quiet music just to relax. Sometimes you want something with a lot of rhythm because you know you, you want to be cheered up. It, it depends. But, but I think music is very important for your psychological well-being. Thank you very much, Samantha. We're almost out of time, so I'm going to ask the, le the last question from Vienna, which was, sometimes we are quarreling in our schools and at home. Do you often disagree about a topic on the space station? And this was from Stephen, nine years old. Yeah, that's a, that's a very interesting question. Um, I do, we do not quarrel. Um, you know, we I think we are uh, we're professionals, and and we just discuss things. Um, and most of the time, we just uh, you know evaluate what's what are the pros and cons of different uh, ways of doing things, and then we come up with a with a consensus, and we decide we're going to do it this way. And uh, but of course, on board we also have a commander. So in the end, the commander can make a decision, and. Uh, you know, it, it, it's very important when you work in a team to have a good leader and to have good followers. So in the end, if the commander, who is the leader, makes a decision, we are everybody else is, is responsible to be a good follower and to uh, embrace that decision and to make it work with everybody and keep on smiling. Well, thank you very much, Samantha. I hear we're almost at the end of our time. So I'd like to thank you for your time and give you the opportunity to say goodbye to Madrid, Trento, and Vienna. Hey, Madrid, Trento, and Vienna, how wonderful, guys, that you have participated in Mission X. I know that you have learned so much. You have worked hard. So I'm incredibly, incredibly proud of you. Um, I think you've, you've learned things that will accompany you throughout your life. Um, you know, just, just uh, hold on to those things that you have learned. Share them with your peers, with your friends, and uh, keep your passion for space. And I hope that many of you, maybe one day, I will meet as, uh, as colleagues in the space business. That would be wonderful. So thank you, and uh, good luck to you. Well, thank you, Samantha. Everyone in the country is cheering and smiling, and I think you have over 700 half students today. They've had a wonderful day, and we'll continue Mission X for a lifetime of fitness and good health. Bye, everybody, from Paxi as well. <laughs>